Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to Swayam Prabha DTH 16 channel. My name is Ariba Shabbir and we have been discussing English language teaching. The module that we are covering these days is methods of teaching English language and we are going to cover communicative language teaching and blended method of teaching in this session. So before we proceed further, let us recapitulate of what we did in the last session. While looking up at this slide, we will find out that we studied audiolingual method, silent way and total physical response method of language teaching. We understood the differentiation and we also tried to figure out how these methods are successful as far as language teaching and learning are concerned. Besides, we also studied audiolingual method which have an oral based approach. Besides, we learned audiolingual method which focuses on drilling students in the use of grammatical sentence patterns. In addition, we try to look up on the silent way which is widely used with advanced students who have a substantial background of language. And we learn that silent way is far reaching affecting not only language learning but the way one perceives the living of life itself. Besides, we have tried to gather uh, the fact that a lot of target language structures and vocabulary can be taught through total physical response. And since TPR is an interesting activity and it involves body movements and it involves students' uh, attention, so it really brings fun and also make the learning easier and faster. So now we are going to learn communicative language teaching. And we will also look on blended method. But uh, before we take up the conceptual note, let us try to see that after this session, what will you be able to develop? So after this session, you will be able to understand communicative language teaching and blended method of teaching, the techniques and principles. You will also be able to analyze this communicative method of teaching by looking up at an example and you will observe the facts. Besides, you will go through uh, the blended method of teaching and in the same way, you will get to know about its techniques and principles. In addition, you will be able to apply general understanding of both the methods to language teaching pedagogy. Now, let us come to this point, communicative language teaching. What do you think is communicative language teaching? Do you think it is similar to the approaches and methods that we studied uh, in the last sessions? Or do you think that communicative language teaching is bringing some reforms in the language teaching pedagogy? So after looking up at this particular method, we will figure out that how far this, uh, this pedagogy is successful. And is it successful in creating a rapport between the teacher and the student? And we will figure out that communicative language teaching is a new one, it is a modest one and it is being widely practiced throughout the world. So communicative language teaching stands on one perspective that besides being accurate, one needs to be appropriate. Now I am writing in this slide that what does accuracy and appropriacy means? So, there are two concepts here. Now, when you say accuracy, it simply means that we are focusing on linguistic aspects of language. And what does this linguistic aspect is that when you are learning a language and when you are looking up at a sentence, you are trying to look up at the components of language. For example, you are looking up how a sentence is made up of, what are its uh, components? There's a subject, there's a verb, there is object, there are phrases, noun phrase, prepositional phrase and so on. So what you are doing is that you are analyzing the sentence linguistically. 
and when you put up the order in a correct way you are making it linguistically accurate or you can say it is a grammatically accurate sentence but when it comes to appropriacy there is some kind of there is some difference in it what is appropriacy is that how far we are able to use the language in a situation so this appropriacy talks more of a social context or you can say that what to say where to say and how to say and that comes under the category of this appropriacy so there are two concepts accuracy talks about the grammatical sentence appropriacy it talks more on how well language can be used in link, in in a social uh, in a social uh, context now uh, let us take up an example of communicative language teaching we are going to enter into a classroom and this classroom consists of the teacher and the student the teacher is going to use communicative language teaching method and at first i'm writing over here in the slide at first what happens that uh, you find that the teacher uh, distributes the handout so there is a use of handout okay and there is writing on both sides fine and you see that on one side uh, is a copy of a sports column from a recent newspaper in which the reporter discusses who he thinks will win the world cup and the teacher asks students to read it so for example he gives uh, the instruction in the target language and uh, the point to be noted here is that the communication which is being which is being handled over here is through the uh, target language or you can say that the medium of instruction is the target language and not the native language so the teacher gives a instruction and uh, uh, the teacher writes some predictions on the blackboard so what are these predictions uh, for example if the teacher writes india is likely to win the world cup to win the world cup this year then the teacher asks the students to look up at these sentence and tell in different ways try to paraphrase this sentence and use it in different ways or use it in a way that is not being said in in, in the statement which is mentioned on the blackboard so uh, many students come up with different ideas some says that um, india probably will win the world cup okay the second student says that india is almost certain to win the world cup now you see that one sentence can be put up in different ways and that is one of the perspectives of communicative language teaching the second point to be noted here is that we are taking a second scenario in which a teacher gives scrambled sentences so a uh, the use of this activity helps the students to figure out how to arrange in a particular order how to arrange sentences in a particular order so teacher gives us scrambled uh, sentences and asks the students to arrange it in a proper way and uh, considering the social context the students try to uh, uh, try to figure it out what is the uh what is the subject what is the verb and what is the object and at the same time they put it in a socially context uh paragraph now in the next scenario we see that teacher uses some cards uh now i'm putting up in the slide as well uh cards are being used in communicative language teaching method and this is an interesting activity because at this time the teacher divides a class into peer members and uh, each group consists of two to three peer members 
uh, at some time if this number is uh, large the number of students could be 4 to 5 so teacher distributes the cards like i'm drawing on the uh, slide teacher distributes a card and each card consists of a diagram or a representation of some kind of sports image for example a card consists of a bat an image of a bat or a card consists of a uh, consists of an uh, image of a hockey stick and so on and uh, you know there could be a ball so each student is asked to put up the card and uh, after that what happens is that if one members of that group has a card uh, showing uh, let's say bat or uh, uh, or a hockey stick then uh, the student puts up his views with regard to that particular image and uh, this is an interesting activity because no one has the picture of that bat only one person could get it and the other persons uh, who are involved in the group are supposed to take up the views and express it with the group members so this becomes interesting and students eventually take part in it in the next scenario we see that a teacher is utilizing cards and uh, uh, by utilizing these cards there are prompts that take place so at first what happens that three cards are being placed in the middle each card consists of an image for example of a ball or of a cricket bat and uh, let's say the another uh, 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 the other card consists of the image of the hockey stick the fourth card let's say is of uh, is is of an image that is unknown to the members of the group she is told that she should try to predict what is in the card and uh, the teacher can also ask the student to identify what one of the members would be doing this weekend so the fifth student is to make the statements like ravi may go uh, for hockey tournament this weekend so if one of the members of that group has a card showing hockey stick the group members would reply that ravi cannot go for hockey treatment because we have or i have his hockey stick so this kind of game is interesting and each student takes turn to come up with different uh, with different cards and each card uh, brings excitement to them as well so this is one of the scenarios that we are noticing in communicative language teaching pedagogy now in the next scenario we see that the teacher reads a number of predictions for example there is a statement the teacher writes on the blackboard and i'm writing over here in the slide and it says that by 2020 solar energy will replace the world's reliance on fossil fuels So the students are told to make statements how probable they think the predictions are and why they believe so. So there could be agreements, there could be disagreements also and people may come up with, uh, with, with something that they would uh, like to defend or they will come up with examples, they will try to put up some rhetoric as well as factual information so they will uh, take turns to debate to argue to put up their points and uh, uh, in this way communicative language teaching method methodology works now let us try to look up a different situation what happens is that we enter into the classroom the teacher is there and we find that students are divided into groups and each group consists of two to three members now the activity that is going to be practiced in this classroom is of role play 
you may think that what is role play role play is an interesting activity it actually brings theater into the classroom and not just the theater it really brings uh, the real life situations into the classroom and that is the crux of the role play so uh, students find an opportunity to apply the real context into the classrooms so for example at the restaurant is given a situation uh, the student may feel that they are sitting in a restaurant and they would have a table they would have a chair they will sit in a way they will get to know about the menu they will order the food and then they will pay for the food they will eat it uh, they will eat it they will order uh, they will order they will eat and then they will pay for the food they will go by thanking to the waiter and to the manager and then they, they will come out so in the role play you see not only verbal communication is practiced but also non verbal communication is uh, taken into consideration and each student is given a chance to reflect what he or she has learned so far this is an interesting activity because it involves the students from all uh, sorts of uh, because it involves the students from different because it helps the students to develop uh, english language competence and um, it can be utilized as an activity and it can also be utilized as a uh, as an informal practice so now let us look up at the techniques uh the authentic materials are used in communicative language teaching besides scrambled sentences can also be used in order to help students develop sentence structures and um, realizing the value of the sentence in the social context also students get to know about language games they learn in a more uh, efficient way and at the same time they get interested they they find interest in participating classroom activities besides we can make out that if a student is given a picture and asked to uh, narrate a story on the basis of that picture or what you can do that you can form a group of 3 uh, to 4 members and you can have a series of pictures and you are going to present one picture to the member and then the members are going to find out that what would be the next picture is about so you will pass on the second picture and then the students will be asked to predict what would be the third picture about so they will be able to construct the story on the basis of that and in an isolated way one picture can be used to ask the students to build a story and spin a tale on it then we can use a role play which is an interesting and we have also observed in the example now let us try to look that this important and interesting pedagogy pedagogy involves certain principles what are these principles that clt or communicative language teaching uh, has one function that it can have many different linguistic forms and we cannot ignore the fact that we are not focusing on the accuracy but we are also focusing on the appropriacy so whenever communication or communicative language teaching method comes across we automatically get into the fact that not just the grammatical concept is uh, considered but also uh, its surrounding matters the next thing is that students should work with language at the discourse or supra sentential level errors here are tolerated and are seen as a natural outcome of communication skills so when students are doing role plays or when they are speaking about the picture or when they are uh, you know talking about the cards or they are narrating about their favorite sport so they are they are going to make some sort of mistakes and it is pretty obvious that errors are likely to happen because they are learning second language and we cannot ignore the fact that the mother tongue interference may also happen 
so teacher here plays an important role but not the central one he or she is not responsible to correct at the same time and uh, there is a wide scope for making errors and after the completion of the activity the teacher can provide the feedback direct or indirect depending upon the convenience now the other thing is that one of the teachers major responsibilities is to establish situations likely to promote communication so we are mainly focusing on bringing the real life context into the classroom and we cannot ignore the fact that it is not just uh, the real life but also the socially appropriate context so at the restaurant at the cinema hall or in the classroom at the library you know there are variety of situations that can be given to students and they they can be asked to enact as if they are really doing it they presented as a, a in, in the form of a theatrical performance and then the students can be involved by uh, rating them the other students who are sitting there and are encountering their performance they can grade them on the basis of clarity on the basis of the language uh accuracy uh the appropriacy their confidence their verbal and non verbal communication the other point to make over here is that communicative interaction encourages cooperation relationship among students and that is one of the benefits of using communicative language teaching because it doesn't provide scope in isolation it is built on cooperation it build, builds on it is built on collaborative efforts so not only just the teacher and the student makes relationship but a kind of rapport and a social constructiveness is seen among the students among the peer members they become friends they start sharing about their details they learn from each other they support each other and then they evaluate each other uh, i think this is one of the best benefits that clt provides in the slide as you see that the social context of the communicative event is essential in giving meaning to the utterances and uh, if a sentence is dealt in isolation it may not produce a very optimum meaning if it is kept in if it is kept in a socially context situation the students are likely to apply several techniques and they will be able to grasp that particular sentence in a more efficient way and then we have the last principle that is mentioned in this slide and that is students should be given an opportunity to express their ideas and opinions so here the rules or the the the, the idea of giving an opinion is not prescribed here uh, learners are given extensive opportunities to reflect to express to doubt to argue and to point uh, of what they think is appropriate and what is not so um, teacher here is a surrogate one here teacher is not playing the central role it is the student oriented class and not the teacher oriented one there are some principles which i have not covered in the last slide so i am trying to cover up here as you see the first point learning to use language forms appropriately is an important part of communicative competence so uh, if we are utilizing that language utterance in our social context that is a part of communicative con competence and um, uh, there is a famous line that was uh, given as an example by a famous linguist noam chomsky who once stated that colorless green ideas sleep furiously i'm writing in the slide at the bottom of it colorless green ideas sleep furiously now if you look up at this sentence you will be amazed to know that its grammatical competency is enough and it is a perfect sentence there is no problem in it as such at outer level 
but uh, when you go into deep and when you look up at its meaning or when you measure its semantic value you will find out that there is colorlessness as well and but there is green also uh, ideas and sleep furiously so somehow this sentence is not qualifying the semantic value and when we say that it is semantically not coming up into our mind or it is not taking a place into our understanding we would say that the sentence is linguistically correct but it is semantically wrong and therefore it is not qualifying the criteria of being a communicative competent sentence so communicative competence here argues that uh, uh, a sentence needs to be grammatically accurate and at the same time it has to be semantically valuable. Now, uh, the second point as it is mentioned in this slide says that teacher acts as a facilitator in setting up a communicative activities and, and as an advisor during the activities. So, teacher is not like in a traditional classroom giving a lecture and going out of it and then uh, just uh, instructing the students rather it gives the opportunity to the students to uh, rather the teacher gives the opportunity to the students uh, to express themselves and teacher becomes facilitator and they become advisors of the uh, of their classrooms they actually play a uh, secondary role in their classroom settings. The third point as mentioned in this slide, in communicating a speaker has a choice not only about what to say but also how to say it. So, games are important because it generates interest and they have a certain features in common with real communicative uh, events, there is a purpose to the exchange. So, the exchange of information, ideas and opinions are taking place. Communicative language teaching is an emerging pedagogy that is being widely used and it is gaining popularity just because of its uh, pedagogy and because of its style of giving the learners the opportunity to express themselves freely, accurately and appropriately. Okay, since we have got a sound understanding of how communicative language teaching works, what are its observations and principles, let us try to figure out the answers of some questions. And with the help of these question and answers, we will try to review the principles of communicative language teaching. So, I am using this slide to uh, help you out understand the key, imp key points. First point is what are the goals of teachers who use communicative language teaching? So, the goal is to enable students to communicate in the target language. So, here communication is the key area on which the teachers and the students are supposed to work. To do this, students need knowledge of linguistic forms and also social context. Which means that they should know the meaning and the function. So, our focus is not only on forms, but are also on meaning and functions. Now, the second point that is to be mentioned over here is that what is the role of the teacher and what is the role of the student. So, the teacher is the facilitator who teacher ok and in this role one of the major responsibilities is to establish situations like to promote communication, to help the students, to take a part with students, to develop uh, students confidence and so on. So, teacher is basically a facilitator and teacher is trying to help the students also to build up a better language competency. And during the activities, the teacher can work as an advisor like I just mentioned. The teacher can also reply to the questions, can also monitor the performance. And 
as far as the evaluation or the monitoring of the performances are concerned, let me tell you that it is not the only uh, the teacher who is consigned to this task. You can also provide the opportunity to the learners also to monitor, to evaluate the students' performances. And in this way, you will be able to engage other students in that task. For example, if uh, one group is performing a task um, or a role play, let's say, on uh, at the restaurant, then other students can have a sheet of paper and in each sheet they will categorize five points. One point will be credited for clarity, the other point will be credited for language accuracy, the third point would be social context, the fourth point would be uh, 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 would be the nonverbal communication and the content development. So, in this way, they will mark the students' performances and students themselves can provide feedback on, uh, upon their friends' performances. So, they will have an eye and they will have uh, the authority to analyze what went wrong with the performance and what went right with the performance. Uh, this will bring close uh, uh, this will bring them close to the task that is being performed. The third question that comes over here is that what are some of the characteristics of the learning and teaching process? So, the most obvious characteristic of communicative language teaching is that almost everything that is done is done with the communicative intent. Okay, and students use the language a great deal through communicative activities such as games, role plays and problem solving tasks. Right, and activities that are truly communicative have generally three uh, steps that are involved. Let me write it down here. What are these three steps? And uh, uh, you know, this these three steps were also uh, mentioned by Morrow, who claimed in a paper in 1981 that information, or you can say the content which is being produced, the choice, and the feedback. So, now uh, the next question is, what is the nature of the student and teacher interaction? The teacher may present some of the lessons such as when working with linguistic accuracy, at other times he is the facilitator of the activities, but he does not always himself interact with the students, rather student to student interaction is more encouraged. And the next question that comes over here is that how is language viewed and how is culture viewed? So, language is viewed as a part of communication, linguistic competence, the knowledge of, of forms and their meanings is just a part of communicative competence. Another aspect of communicative competence is the knowledge of forms and functions. As we have seen in the lesson, a variety of forms can be used to uh, perform a single function, right? Uh, like one sentence could be used in different ways. So, linguistic forms are important, but at the same time, what role it is playing and how it is being delivered, that is also a part of the communicative language teaching methodology. Uh, there are two more questions that I would like to put up over here. First is that what is the role of the student's native language and you know the judicious use of the student's native language is permitted in CLT. So, however, uh, whenever possible, 
uh, whenever possible the target language should be used not only during communicative activities but also for explaining the activities the instructions uh, uh, should be delivered in the target language so the use of the target language is very prevalent in the entire pedagogy of communicative language teaching and uh, there is a very less or no use of the native language since the students are being given the environment of using the language in the real life context so the entire environment is artificially created so that students get the feel about it they find themselves dwelled into the situation and also they perform it under the surroundings now uh, the question is that how is evaluation accomplished so a teacher evaluates not only the students uh, accuracy but also their fluency the student who has the most control of the structures and vocabulary is not always the best communicator so it is important to note over here that social context is again coming up with more uh, importance. A teacher can informally evaluate students' performances in his or her role as an advisor or co-communicator and for more formal evaluation, informal and I am writing over here and formal, informal and for uh, formal evaluation. A teacher is likely to use an integrative test which has a real communicative function. So, in order to assess students writing a skill, a teacher might ask them to write a letter to a friend. A teacher may give the situation that you are going to buy, a, you are going to borrow a book from library and uh, this book is not available. So, request the librarian to uh, buy the book for the library. There is one more important point that I am mentioning over here is that how does the teacher respond to errors? This is crucial here. Why? Because uh, in most of the language teaching methods, we saw that uh, students were corrected at the same time. Some methods uh, say that teachers should not be correcting the errors at that point of time, rather they can facilitate their uh, problems with solutions later. So, what is the point here that to be made and uh, I would say that errors of form can be tolerated and, uh, and of course, they are the natural outcome because of the interference of the mother tongue also. So, when the development of communication takes place, it is very natural for the students to make errors it is more important for them to uh, bring the thoughts into articulation. So, when they are able to articulate their thoughts, they will be able to do it in a better way. And as far as errors are concerned, they can realize it, they can reflect it and they will be able to self-correct themselves from the performances uh, that they now, let us try to understand the blended method of language teaching. Before I uh, take up this concept, let us try to look up at those methods that we studied. For example, we studied grammar translation. We also looked up direct uh, method of teaching. In addition, we understood audio lingual method and we figured out that how uh, total physical response, silent way and now communicative language teaching method are taking place in second language or foreign language teaching pedagogy. This is the blended method of teaching and if you remember that after uh, the session, uh, after, the, uh, after the two sessions that I had delivered, uh, I gave you few questions and those questions were based in that which techniques do you like most or which uh, method of teaching do you prefer most while teaching in the classroom and this blended method of language teaching brings the solution of it.
So, what is the blended method means that blended as the name itself suggests it is the mix of uh, different methods, different methodologies. So, I am going to uh, narrate uh, an example, I hope you will get it out. We are going to enter into the classroom and this classroom consists of a teacher and the students. The students have uh, higher intermediate level of English. They can understand and write well and at the same time the teacher is going to instruct them with certain kind of translation exercises. So, we see that the teacher is giving a passage to them and this passage is in the native language. The teacher is instructing to the students to translate this passage into the target language. And not surprisingly, the students are really taking interest in it. They are looking up at the grammatical features, they are looking up at the components of uh, the sentences and one after the other they are translating the passages. Later the students submit their passages translated one to the teacher. The teacher then instructs the students to do it vice, vice versa. It means the translated passages would uh, further be translated into the English language. Now, this is the one scenario. This is uh, the one scenario. In the second scenario, we see that the teacher is dealing with some kind of sentence and uh, she says that uh, a book is kept on the table and while dealing this sentence, she tells that this sentence consists of on and the table. Then she tells the students that the table, uh, that in the phrase the table, the the is basically a determiner and table is noun. And then she tells the students that the composition of the and the table results in noun phrase. So, she drives the fact that a noun phrase consists of determiner and noun. Then she adds that the preposition is also there that is on. And then she proposes the fact that when the preposition is accompanied with noun phrase, it results in prepositional phrase. So, the students get the idea that prepositional phrase consists of preposition plus noun phrase. Now, we are amazed to see that uh, this teaching of language, this method of language teaching is slightly different from the grammar translation method because translation was the exercises of grammar translation method. Now, this method of teaching grammar is not included in grammar translation, rather it is included in direct method. Then in another class or you can say in another scenario, we see that some students are being grouped into peer members, uh, they, they, are, uh, uh, they are given a situation and they are preparing and then one by one each group is presenting an act and this act is being appreciated and being applauded by a large number of uh, students sitting in the classroom. The teacher then provides suggestions and gives direct or indirect feedback. We see that this is not a part of grammar translation and we also realize that this particular method is also not a part of direct method and I am sure you would have got this idea that this does not uh, make uh, the part of uh, audio lingual method as well. This is the part of the communicative language teaching and then you enter into a, a different situation or you are coming up with a different scenario where you see that the teacher is playing a central role and the teacher is directing the students to stand up and to sit down, then the, then the student are being asked to again stand up, then they are being asked to move towards the north, towards the south, then students are finding a lot of excitement, they are applauding and uh, some students are not being able to concentrate, but some are really actively doing it and you find that a whole classroom is not, uh, uh, is not the lecture oriented, but a lot of body movements of the students are being involved in it. And hence, we can conclude from these examples that uh, this is not a part of communicative language teaching or audiolingual method or silent way or uh, grammar translation or direct way. It is a part of total physical response. 
So, as the name suggests, blend it, which means mix of different uh, methods. This is also becoming popular because if a teacher is not satisfied with one kind of method, he or she is uh, expected to produce uh, the lesson with different methodologies. And also, if a student are not accustomed to one particular thing, a teacher is flexible enough to convert this class into a different style and, and deliver the lesson with different method. So, blended method is becoming popular and as it contains a mixture of all the methods, it is getting accepted worldwide. Now, let us try to look up at the principles, uh, but, but before we go for principles, let us ask what are the techniques like I demonstrated in the example, the techniques that can be used are role play, okay. Uh, the technique uh, that can be used in blended method, for example, teaching uh, grammar with the inductive uh, way, with inductive method. So, inductive method of teaching grammar, you can also ask the students to play on cards or describe the picture, narrate an incident or uh, uh, narrate uh, something that interests them, describe about their hobbies and so on. So, again that will come under the category of CLT and uh, you can ask the students to translate and uh, translation can also become a part of blended approach since it will take uh, components from uh, grammar translation method. So, there are variety of techniques that can be used. It is just that what you like most and also what your students like most. And what is the requirement? What is the level of a student? So, before we apply any method, let us try to do audience analysis. So, I am writing over here audience analysis. Now, for many of you, it would be a new term. What is audience analysis? As the name itself suggests, it talks about the audience. So, before you present a lecture, uh, before you go into the classroom, think about audience, think about their age, think about their level of competency, think about their profession and their last qualification. So, you know, if you are going to design a lecture or if you are going to design an activity for somebody who comes from science background, then your lecture would be or your activity would be different from the person who is coming from science background, from commerce background or from arts background. So, profession matters, their expertise matters, their context matters. At the same time, whatever the activity you are designing for young kids or you can say you are designing for school children would be different from the adult learners. So, like in the previous classes, we tried to figure out that how old and young learners are different. Similarly, we need to understand that what is the age of the students, what is their competence with regard to the English language and how far they are going to adopt this activity, is it really going to be worthwhile for them, is it really going to interest them and if you incorporate activities like total physical response uh, for um, school children, I am sure they would take a lot of interest in it and it would become more exciting to them. And this can also be applied to adult learners, but the complexity would matter. Now, let us try to quickly see the principles of blended method of language teaching. So, blended learning allows the students to practice all four language skills, reading, writing, listening and speaking. So, these four are the skills and whichever component or method you like the most, whichever technique you find is useful as far as the learner's uh, uh, level of background is there, you can uh, use it in any way.
The other point as mentioned in this slide is that it allows the students to come to terms with difficult concepts. So, lot of you know techniques like inferencing, uh, your prediction of meaning uh, when you see a difficult word and a lot of things like skimming and uh, scanning, they all can be utilized by teaching uh, uh, through communicative language uh, method and you know you can also play an advertisement from a television or you can ask the students to listen to the bus stand announcement or railway station announcement and then ask the students to figure out the details give them the task of listening to specific information and listening to a gist right so you will be uh, helping the students to come up with difficult concepts, difficult words and you will be able to build uh, better vocabulary. Blended learning in ESL gives you students a chance to take responsibility of their learning. So, since it is a learner oriented class, they are expressing their opinion, their behavior is being uh, uh, visualized. So, they, they, they get to know a lot about themselves also. They find space to express themselves and a lot of critical thinking can also happen and therefore, it gives a wide platform for growth and development. As you see in the slide, it also promotes student interaction among community building. Okay. Uh, when there is a point of interaction, I am sure CLT can also be used, uh, audio lingual can be used if we aim to help students say certain statements in a specific context. We can use this audio lingual method CLT for the expression of their opinions and ideas, a grammar translation to make them more accurate and uh, total physical response to exercise their listening capability and so on. So, it somehow gives the student to student interaction, the student teacher interaction and so on. So, it also helps teachers respond more easily to learners different styles maximizing the strengths of each environment. So, when we are not correcting them directly, uh, in other words I say if we are not uh, asking the students to correct at the same time, then we are giving them the chance to find more confidence in them and therefore, this method uh, gives the learners the opportunity to work on their errors by understanding or by, by having a sound understanding of their performance. The other thing is that blended learning maximizes social interaction and uh, because uh, we are including many uh, methods, so social interaction becomes the part of it, collaboration, cooperation. Uh, uh, the communication which is essential and which is the ultimate goal of teaching language uh, becomes more prevalent and we give the space to both the teacher and the learner. With blended learning, teaching is not limited to the seating capacity of the classroom. A large number of learners can be reached out irrespective of their location and instru institutional department. So, uh, depending upon their, uh, upon the interaction level and their uh, institutional department, location, re uh, region and so on, you can design activity, you can work on their errors and you can provide uh, indirect feedback, you can provide direct feedback, give counseling sessions to them if they are uh, coming across with problems like lack of confidence and all. So, these things can be done to help the students become better and efficient in language. Dear learners, we will now try to review the principles that we have studied as far as blended language of teaching is concerned. So, the first question that comes to our mind is that what are the goals of teachers who use blended method of teaching? So, uh, this is a mixed answer. One is that students should be grammatically correct or grammatical accuracy. The other thing is they should be able to develop communicative competence. And the third important 
component of this point is that they should be able to have a sound relation between the form and the meaning. On the whole, you can say that not just one or two skills, rather the four skills that are there in the language uh, learning are being comprised here. Listening, speaking, reading and writing. The second question that is over here is that the, what is the role of the teacher and what is the role of the students? So, as far as the role of the teacher is concerned, uh, it is very flexible. So, it depends upon the methodology which he or she is using. So, if uh, the translation exercise is going on, a teacher can uh, take a role which is central in the class. So, uh, you know, the grammatical accuracy would be the ultimate goal and also converting the sentences into the target language will be the outcome. So, teacher can play a central role, the teacher can play a central role and the class can be teacher centered. Besides, what about the students? So, the teacher can play a flexible role. The question is, can students also play a flexible role? The answer to this question is yes, the students can also play a flexible role and depending upon the method, uh, students can choose whether they would like to be central tenant of the classroom or they would like to be sub tenant in the classroom. So, if they are being, if they are learning language through total physical response, for instance, they would be directed by the teacher. So, they will not be playing the central role, rather teacher will be enacting as a director or somebody who gives a command. So, students uh, role is also very flexible in this regard. Now, the next question that comes over here is that what are the characteristics of teaching and learning process? And uh, the answer to this question is that the most obvious characteristic of uh, blended language teaching is that the students should acquire all the four skills. And students should have fluency in listening, speaking, reading and writing. They should be able to utilize these skills in an efficient manner. And the next question which I would be putting over here is that what is uh, the role of the student's native language and the answer to this question is that it depends again and it is very flexible because when it comes to the student's competency as we discussed in the last to last slide that audience analysis is important. If you find that the students are not competent enough or their level of uh, language is uh, novice for example then you should be using native language in your uh, instruction. However, if you see that the students are moderate enough, then you can comprise many of the, most of the media, most of the instructional uh, medium in English. However, if you see that the students are advanced, you can completely go with the flow and the target language can be used as a medium of instruction. So, uh, it depends that what is the level of the learners and also it depends that how uh, students are going to, uh, uh, that, that how students are going to incorporate as far as the learning is concerned. The other thing which is to be noted here is that what is your goal? Now, after designing a certain lesson or preparing a lesson plan, you should always take this into consideration that what is your ultimate goal, not just the long term goal that you want your students to get through all the four skills, but what is also your short term goal. Like after this session, what do you think that students will, be, uh, will get into or what would they learn? So, in this way, you will be able to make them efficient and at the same time, they will be able to grasp your lesson uh, in a better way. So, uh, let us say that after the role play, students will be able to get more confidence while speaking. If this is the ultimate goal, then you should not be correcting the students at the, 
at that point of time and also you will be giving extensive opportunities time and you know the uh, their uh, group members uh, can be uh, can act as facilitators and their stu and the other students who are there in the classroom they can evaluate and this will make the class more interesting and uh, it will bring more fun the other thing is uh, i would like to make over here is the other point that i would like to make over here is that how do you categorize the students be it blended approach of teaching or communicative method of teaching and the answer to this question is that the best way to categorize the students is that you should take a diagnostic assessment now what is diagnostic assessment is that uh, as we will cover up in the assessment part also that diagnostic assessment identifies the students strengths and weaknesses so if you get to know that your students are more efficient in listening and speaking but they are lacking somewhere in reading and writing skills then your activities or your classroom instructions will be more inclined towards learning reading and writing skills however if you find vice versa then you will be incorporating more spoken english activities so uh, you know you are going to understand uh, what is the level of your students and to attain this information you can conduct a diagnostic assessment identify their strong points their weak points and categorize those students without telling them that each group comprises of modest student a competent student and a novice student now coming up quickly to the next question um how is evaluation accomplished so again the evaluation is very flexible and uh, generally in blended approach we aim to design integrative approach of testing in which all the four skills are tested so if you are giving an exercise of listening i'm sure you would incorporate and you would incorporate a speaking part also so in this way both the skills are being tested like uh, show them the video and ask them to build up points on the content that you just heard or watched and this will help them to uh, focus on listening and they will develop sound understanding and on the basis of that they will build their own points so similarly reading and writing can also be done you can give them an email and ask them to reply to this email in this way integrated test um, will be uh, will be the central tenet of assessment and since it is flexible you can go to up uh, to any uh, method of testing and the last question that is important to include here is that how does the teacher respond to student errors since we are giving the opportunities to learners and since the ultimate goal of ours is to make the learners use the language and uh, learn the language so um, there should be a wider scope for making errors uh, i think uh, we can work on direct and indirect feedbacks and if students are encouraged to speak to utilize their language in different context our methods would be enough successful now in this session we learned that communicative language teaching involves teachers to look closely at what is involved in communication and we also learn that if teachers intend students to use the target language they must truly understand that all being communicatively competent entails and a variety of language form is presented at a time and blended method includes all the methods of language teaching we are not consigned to one particular way we have a variety of options available on our table and blended method requires the teacher to have deep understanding of all the methods that so that he or she can apply a right approach at a right time uh yes that is something which needs to be understand uh, which needs to be understood that uh, teacher should have a sound knowledge of all uh, the methods so that uh, 
so that a proper um, uh, implementation is done. So, when you go into a classroom, it is not just about teaching, but it is also about preparing. So, planning, preparing and implementation. Planning, preparing and implementing. Three go, three things go one after the other and all the three steps are to be measured in a right way so that students uh, find uh, steps to grow up. With this, we have come to an end of this session. These are the references. Thank you very much for joining.